Escape from Tarkov has an intricate and confusing health system for a lot of new players entering the game. In addition to the total health that you get assigned to your player, you in addition have multiple different limbs and different injuries that you can deal with while traversing Tarkov. Mismanagement of this health system, even at 90% of your total health pool, can lead to your death. So understanding the health system and its individual intricacies and complexities can help you survive longer and more often in Escape from Tarkov. This video is designed for new players or players who are returning to Tarkov to help them reach a point of understanding how the health system works or a reminder for those things that maybe have been added or were new when you first joined the game. We'll be going over each individual health item and each individual effect that you can deal with with your time in Tarkov. Hi, I'm Solaris, and welcome to another Escape from Tarkov video. This will be another video in our Lost in Tarkov series. This will be designed to help players get more comfortable using the health system and different health items in the game and dealing with the different issues that they can run into as they play. We are pushing for that 1000 subscriber mark here on the channel. So if you've been watching the videos or are new to the channel, I would recommend subscribing, helping us get to that 1000 subscribers. And in addition, we'll be having a lot more content coming out for you guys in the coming months. With all that being said, let's get right into the video. The first thing to understand in Escape from Tarkov is that you do have a total health pool. Currently that health pool sits at 440 HP. However, that health pool is actually broken down into each of your different limbs. You have seven total limbs or portions of your body that the health is divided between. Two arms, two legs, your stomach, torso, and head. The closest game that I could compare this to is the cripple system that you deal with in a lot of the Fallout games where you can cripple a specific limb. So there's not just health associated around your total HP, but also for each individual limb. And as that health goes down on those limbs, it can cause other issues. It can also cause your death in the case of some limbs like your head and chest. The one major difference is between games like Fallout and this one is that the limb damage that you have in Fallout, for example, is completely independent of your total health pool, while in Escape from Tarkov, those things are actually directly related to each other. With those health pools, each one of them reaching zero causes a different issue for your character. So, for example, if your arms reach zero on the health, or if one of your arms reaches zero on the health, this can cause your player to have much more difficulty aiming. He can't keep his gun up, he can't keep his gun steady. If, for example, your leg reaches zero, you start to limp. You are unable to run unless you are on some type of painkillers. You have trouble moving. It's harder to crouch. You move much slower. If your stomach reaches zero, your energy and your hydration will start to plummet down to zero very quickly, and you will pass out significantly faster than if you reach zero without a zeroed stomach or black stomach. If your head or chest reaches zero, you will die at any point beyond this, at which point your chest or head takes any more damage after zero. Now to address the specific ways that you can die, there are a few ways that you can die in Tarkov. The first two, as I mentioned, is your head or chest reaching zero. There are some qualifiers with that, however, as there is currently a bug in the game where if your chest or head bleeds to zero, you can still survive at that point. However, this is a bug and should be treated as such. If at any point in the future you are relying on that mechanic, you may get put in a very bad position later on once the game changes that to what it is intended to be. In addition to either your chest or head reaching zero, your health pool can also drain down to zero. If you're bleeding at a very fast rate and your head and chest are somehow still there after having all of your other limbs down to zero, if your total health pool reaches zero, this obviously also kills your character. The next thing that we'll be addressing are the different effects. So in addition to dying, there are different effects that affect your character while you're still alive when getting shot or when starting to bleed, things like that. All of those different things have different effects on your character. So we'll be going through each one and talking about what each one does. So the first thing that we're going to talk about are bleeds. Now bleeds are actually divided into two categories here. So you have the light bleeds and the heavy bleeds, and these are pretty self-explanatory, but essentially each bleed, whether it's light or heavy, basically just subtracts from your total HP health pool at either a higher amount per minute or a lower amount per minute. So for a light bleed, obviously you're going you're gonna to subtract less health per minute. For a heavy bleed, you're going to subtract more health per minute. Now, 
one thing to understand about bleeds is that they will subtract from your body parts evenly so it will not subtract based on percentage that your body parts take up of your total health pool so if one takes up 60 and one takes up 70 it'll take one off of each it's not going to take you know one percent of 60 and one percent of 70 it's going to take one off each things like your head or your arms anything with a lower health pool is going to reach zero faster so you're going to want to make sure that you prioritize healing that area first generally with light bleeds you can kind of continue the fight that you're in try to finish the fight and then try to patch up afterwards when it comes to heavy bleeds unless the fight is absolutely immediate you want to try to get to some kind of cover stop that heavy bleed and then continue the fight from there because with heavy bleeds you'll get in a situation very quickly where you can be one shot by any bullet if you don't stop that bleed so in terms of dealing with these light bleeds can be dealt with with a few different things primarily bandages you can use the single use or the army bandage which has two uses in addition to that you can use saluas car kits ifax afax and grizzly first aid kits as well almost every type of healing that can heal your hp also does a bandage effect the exception to that is the ai2 med kit heavy bleeds on the other hand you have to use a little bit more specific items so first, first off, you're going to have the two tourniquet options. you got the Esmark tourniquet and the Cat tourniquet. And then more commonly used by a lot of players are the Hemostats. So the Hemostats come with three uses. You, can, you have three different heavy bleed stops all in one place. But in addition to those, if you need to, you can use Ifax, you can use Saluas, and you can use AFAC but at a greater cost of their total health pool that they can heal. In addition to these, you can use the Grizzly First Aid Kit. The next effect you can receive is a fracture. This can happen to your any of your actual limbs, so your arms and legs. This will act similarly to when your health pool of a limb reaches zero. So if you fracture one of your arms, it will be more difficult to aim. If you fracture one of your legs, you'll have to limp and move much slower. In addition, you can jump, but you are going to take damage every time you jump. Fractures can be handled by using one of two options for splints. So the first option that you have is the immobilizing splint. This is a single use splint similar to just the original bandage that you get. In addition to this, though, you do have the aluminum splint option, which actually gives you five uses in terms of getting fractures handled. In addition to this, you can use the Grizzly First Aid Kits and you can also use the Survival 12 Field Surgical Kit. This surgical kit will go into more depth on later in the video as we talk about these surgery kits. One big difference between bleeds and fractures is that you can ignore the effects of a fracture by using something that gives you the painkiller effect. So a few of the options there are the augments and painkillers, the anogen painkillers, Vaseline, Golden Star, Ibuprofen. You have lots of different options that give you painkillers. The one caveat with using painkillers is that one, a lot of times there are negative effects that come with those painkillers. But in addition to that, if you do sprint on a fractured leg, for example, you will take damage to your entire body and not just to that leg. The next effect we've already touched on, and this is when the health pool of a specific limb becomes zero. This is most commonly referred to as a being a blacked limb or a zeroed out limb. So for this, you cannot just use any kind of item that heals you to get that from zero to whatever your max health is. You will actually have to use a surgery kit on that, either the CMS or the Survival 12 Field Surgical Kit as mentioned earlier. What these will do is these will cut into the total health pool that that limb can have for the remainder of the raid, but will put that limb back at one HP. And at the point where your limb reaches one HP, you can now heal the limb with your normal healing items that you have in your inventory. When it comes to the behavior of black limbs, they behave very similarly to fractures in terms of what their effects are on you, being that you can't hold your gun upright, you can't run well. You can, however, ignore the effects of these black limbs with painkillers, similarly to the way that you do with fractures. However, obviously with them already at zero, it's gonna be cutting into that health pool a whole lot faster since it's already at zero. One really important thing to remember when it comes to the CMS and the Survival 12 Field Surgical Kit is that the CMS has less uses and is smaller in your inventory, but also cuts down the maximum HP of your individual limb much more than the Survival 12 does. The Survival 12 Field Surgical Kit gives you 15 uses. However, it does take up an extra spot in your inventory. It can also deal with fractures and also cuts down less on your health pool of that particular limb. 
one note that I want to mention for anybody who is struggling to remember which you know health item solves which problem is that if you actually double click on the health item or right click and inspect the health item it will actually tell you exactly what it deals with so for example the car first aid kit which does light bleeds but not heavy bleeds if you inspect it it will actually tell you that it does this and will also tell you the amount of hp from the health kit it will use to solve a problem like that one healing item that I have touched on here and there throughout the video, but I want to mention here uh, at the very end is the Grizzly First Aid Kit. The Grizzly First Aid Kit can basically manage any kind of healing issue that you have with the exception of black limbs. The only thing that it cannot solve is a black limb. So if you have a fracture, it'll take care of it. A heavy bleed, it'll take care of it. Light bleed, it'll take care of it. And in addition to this, it has an 1800 point health pool. So it's got a massive health pool to deal with every item. It's a really, really easy uh, grab and go type of item. The only problem with it is that it does take up a large amount of inventory space. So that is the one major downfall of this item. We will have a video addressing where the best place is to find different kinds of meds on every map. So if you're having trouble with meds or running out of meds and don't have the money to pay therapists, check out that video. We'll have that up here in the top right corner as soon as it is available. So if you're having trouble, check that video out and then we'll get on to the next part. The next session we'll, we'll be addressing is energy and hydration. These essentially work very similarly and essentially just equate to your hunger and your hydration or your water needs. The way that these work in game is that while you are not in a raid, they will slowly increase back towards the total cap of 100 or 110 once you upgrade your rest station. In raid, they will slowly decline at a certain rate, depending on weather, depending on events, all kinds of different things. They will also lower much quicker while your stamina is regenerating or if you've overworked your character by, you know, sprinting, exhausting yourself, and then immediately sprinting again as soon as you get stamina back. These kinds of things can help those actually go down faster. So you want to try to avoid overworking your character so that you're not dealing with food issues or water issues every single raid. The negative effects of having these things reach zero are a couple of different things. First off, your vision will blur and it will be much more difficult to see enemies and identify targets at any kind of range. I would say anywhere over 25 to 50 meters, it is much more difficult to identify a target. In addition to this, your health pool will start going down significantly over time. So you will have to constantly heal to keep up with the damage that that energy or hydration being at zero is doing to you. The final thing that this does is it actually causes your stamina to be cut in half. So it causes a, a major issue with stamina. And if you are at zero in energy, your stamina will almost go to zero in terms of regeneration. So you won't even regain stamina at that point until you found something to eat to regain your energy. One big thing to note is that if your stomach gets zeroed or blacked, this will directly affect your energy and hydration going down significantly through the rest of the raid unless you surgery that stomach and get it patched back up to where it at least has one health point. One final thing that I want to mention that I did touch on here and there is that you do have the option to use painkillers. A lot of people run these in their secure container so that if they get into a bad position or into a fight that they didn't want to be a part of or if they get into a position in a fight where they're at a significant disadvantage because of the issues that they're dealing with with the health system, they can use painkillers to ignore these effects and finish the fight. One of the big things that you want to note when using painkillers is that they do have negative effects. Golden Star will cause your screen to become very fuzzy for a brief period and almost give you zero visibility when you use it. You also get kind of like a pixelated effect on your screen while you have the painkillers active. However, you are able to ignore the effects that you're dealing with, whether it be a fracture or a blacked limb. The other thing that you want to know is that using these will drop your energy and hydration. Painkillers are one of the worst they will actually cause your water to dip by like 17 points every time you use one. So if you're hitting painkillers over and over and over again, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to your water or bringing water into those raids where you expect to be going into those situations. One thing that a lot of players will do if you seem like you're not having time to pop your painkillers whenever you're into a fight is they'll do what's called pre-medding. So what they'll do is when they get close to or near an area that they think that they will come into some kind of combat or that they come into combat many times in the past, they will actually go ahead and pop a painkiller, whether it be a Vaseline or an ibuprofen. They'll try to pop one of those painkillers that kind of last a little bit longer. You can see that time effect 
on the actual painkiller itself. It'll tell you how long it'll last, but they'll pop that painkiller. That'll help them last if they run into some kind of combat, you know, within that amount of time, they'll just be ready to deal with any of the effects that come to them. Hopefully for those of you that are new players who are trying to join Escape from Tarkov, this video will make it a little bit easier for you to join such a daunting game and just make that a little bit easier for you as you find your place in Tarkov. If you felt like this video helped you at all or feel like it will help other people, it would be greatly appreciated if you would like the video and comment down below. Let me know in the comments what your favorite healing item is. Personally, I like the AFAC. It doesn't take up much space. It's got a really lot, really high health pool and can deal with multiple different effects. The only thing I think it gets beat by is sometimes the Grizzly, but because I really value my inventory space, I really like having the AFAC instead. Let me know what your favorite health item is down below so we can talk about what the differences are and what the benefits and disadvantages are in the comments. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, I'd recommend hitting the subscribe button. Check out our Lost in Tarkov playlist. That playlist will have all our different videos that we've designed specifically for newer players. So if you're struggling, you feel lost, check out that playlist down below. We'll have you some videos there ready to help get you into Tarkov a little bit faster. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.